Oh, hello. Hey, fellow furniture dorks. So Teresa is still on vacay. Who says she could keep taking these pictures? I know, what is with all this time off I give her? I don't know what we're thinking. Anyway, I'm kind of stooped down here because we're gonna be working on this dresser piece. This is actually a custom and uh, I need to get it done. And I figured we've got some great techniques going on in this piece. This is a great one to show you. So I'm probably gonna move the camera a little closer and just let you mostly see the work that we're doing um, instead of looking at our charming faces. And I know there's a lot of you out there wondering, gee, what techniques is Sue gonna teach today? None, absolutely none. Sue is gonna be base painting the bottom here. Um, so she's gonna, we're gonna be using mostly bungalow for this. Um, this is bungalow 47. She's gonna be doing flower frog on the bottom. Pretty color, very pretty color. And of course she'll be using her S30 Klingon brush because we love them, they clean themselves. Love them. Um, they only clean themselves if you actually do a little bit of work. You do have to rinse, rinse them, them out. first. And don't let the paint dry on your bristles because then you really need to clean them. Um, yeah, so we, we had a little incident with that here this week. Um, Pet peeve. Yeah, it, 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 they really do <laughs> clean the, the, they will clean all the paint out of the ferrule, but you do actually have to rinse them. If you just put them in there fully wet um, with paint or fully dried with paint, um, they're not cleaning themselves. But anyway, uh, so she's gonna be painting flower frog on the bottom and I'm gonna bring my paper. This piece is gonna match another piece that I painted that was a dining room table. Um, it sold the first day it hit the floor and this is how it was painted. I don't know if any of you remember that. So she bought the table and then we had this piece upstairs and she wanted a buffet to match it. So this is a Drexel and we were, it had been primed, it's been primed with Wise Owl Gray Primer, which is like the best, it's the best primer. You've got the custom drawer in there for all your cutleries and silverware. Yeah, this is an amazing, this is like a, I think this is a Drexel Legacy piece. Anyway, um, we took, we were originally painting it with the hardware on because I was going to do a different treatment. And you know, when I do sort of the specialty treatments, I paint with the hardware on it. So that's why you see some spots that are not primed because um, we took the hardware off because we're doing this, which is different than the original intention. But she caught us before we got too far into it that we couldn't change. So I'm going to be teaching you my bride, my dry brush, not a bride brush. No bride brushing? No bride brushing. No, no. <laughs> so... I'm sorry, I don't, it's been a long week. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna teach you my dry brush tabletop finish, which is um, one that I guess I'm fairly well known for in the area. And um, pretty much always, whenever I put these on the floor, they sell out usually the same day. Um, so good, apparently though. people like them. Busy. Apparently people like them. I know I already have like two people asking for dining room tables at seat eight to 10 before Thanksgiving. So, uh, so these guys are getting a makeover. So yeah, so our work tables that you usually see us painting at, I've got to clean those up and those are the longest they need leaves and stuff. So these are the longest ones we have. So those are actually going to be getting makeovers themselves and becoming somebody's dining room furniture. So, and the girls will be painting lots and lots of chairs and you'll be seeing me doing lots of upholstery if you come by. Anyway, so we're gonna recreate this tabletop and this piece to match this dining room. So that's the plan. Um, and in the original, I had primed with white and this is gray, but when all is said and done, you aren't really gonna see the difference in that, so I'm not, I'm not terribly worried about it. I'm gonna be in your way, No, I'm gonna paint back here. I know, but eventually. Oh, well, yeah, that might be a problem eventually. Oh, well, you know, just let me know. So um, the way I started this off, so originally my piece was painted in white um, and instead of gray, but again, once it's all distressed, you really won't see that. And the next thing for me to do is actually to layer it with a coat of wood beam, which is brown. How over the sides are you gonna go so that I know where to stop painting? Um, I am gonna actually stop right here at, so, uh, so I guess I'll do this to top lip. I guess I'll do this top lip here. I do the second lip, you do the top lip. I'll do this whole two, this two right. band. What about the bottom? That two? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do these two bands. Okay. So you go up to that. And give it a mic. Okay. I'm going to bring the camera a little closer so you can actually see the technique a little better. But you won't see our faces as much. That's okay. And drop you down so you can see the painting. Put all the actual paint on there. So I'm using an S50 Klingon. 
and it's just a little wider. Unfortunately, we're sold out of them right now. The manufacturer is actually sold out. They are having a problem getting some of the materials to make the S50, but I, I really like the S50, so. Oh, this is super thick, so I'm definitely gonna need a spray bottle. I got the fresh water in both bottles. Sometimes when we leave them out and we don't um, tighten the lids, tighten the lids or... things like that, some of the moisture evaporates and it gets real thick. And when that happens, and this is true of any chalk paint really, um, at least it's not like when we used to use fat paint, which I love fat paint, so I'm not dissing fat paint, but remember when it get that weird smell? Oh, yeah. Um, at least it's not like that. But basically a little bit of water and it starts moving nicely. So what is happening out there? What are you doing this weekend? My granddaughter, Phoebes, is coming in. Yay, hopefully we get some pool time, but I just got a weather report saying it's looking like storms are coming in. So all my kids, well, not all my kids, because Paige is in Georgia, but um, my two kids that live here and their spouses and my grandbabies, we're all supposed to come over tomorrow and making meatballs. Yay. I'm making spaghetti and meatballs from scratch and uh, some cherry cheesecake. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. And, hey. and we're, everybody's supposed to come and go swimming. And then I found out this morning that Lily, um, my youngest daughter, the one who used to work here but has abandoned us. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's laughing since I said that. Because um, it's true. Because it's true. But my youngest daughter, Lily, who has abandoned us, she, um, oh, that's really weird. This is kind of acting like it's got wax on it. That's weird. No wax here. No, there's definitely no wax, but it's kind of bubbling up like it has wax. So I'm definitely going to be careful on that and make sure that that's sticking. Um, either that or that'll be where it super distresses. But there's never been wax on here, so that's an interesting, an interesting look. Interesting development. Yes. Um... Anyway, she apparently, so I'm going to have to move your phone. Okay. It can't be up here. I don't see any come. Um, <laughs> she apparently is in quarantine this week because she is sick. See, her new job got her sick. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but. We're going to blame the job. But we're going to blame that because, you know, she's not here anymore. She did look pretty cute and she did send me a picture earlier this week about how nice their bathrooms were at the new office because you know ours are always half dried paint in the sink and things like that not so much in the restrooms that everybody else uses but the ones that like we use you know the employees lounges everything's got paint everywhere so I know right and so somehow somehow she thinks that a nice bathroom is a nice thing She'll learn. She'll learn. She'll learn. You were awesome. She left us. This is the second time she's tried to leave me. It really is. She's she's a fool. She she seems to be, you know, as so many children do, that they need to spread their wings, go on their own, their own way. That's all right. My son's started working for us, so. Gain one, lose one. Gain one, lose one. Hi. Hi. I missed you. You're that third, but I can't avoid that right now. We can fix that up later. All right. Just let me do my thing and then we'll touch up afterwards. All right. You know how I am. Everything perfect at the very minute I do it. Um, Maybe not. Yeah, we've seen you on this program. That's not, that's not completely true. Can you guys see anything other than... <laughs> what are we looking at? You know, what are we're looking we? at the top. We're looking at the top. Let me give you a little better view somehow. Sue in it or something. So it's, I don't know, somewhat interesting. You know, just watching, literally just watching paint dry the entire oh, time. We all love to watch paint dry. Come on. Is that true, Jake? Do we all like to watch paint dry? Yeah. yeah. 
That's Teresa's son, Jake, who now works here also. Because we are very nepotistic. He's not Jake from State Farm. But we do like to call him Jake from State Farm. Because why wouldn't you? So we picked up some new followers from um, Jamie Ray's page, and we appreciate you following along. Hello, everybody. Um, we appreciate the shout out from um, Zeb and Jamie Ray. We're gonna get that living room there straightened up. Yeah, I've been messaging with with uh, Jamie about the sofa because you know my primary business is staging. Um, we don't always stage our furniture for pictures or anything like that because we don't sell much online yet. Um, that may be changing because we're implementing Shopify as our POS system. And that means everything has to go online, which means that we're probably gonna have to do more um, staging of furniture for, piece, uh, for pictures. But generally speaking, everything sells so quickly, or most everything sells quickly, that it just hasn't been something we've spent a lot of time on. It'll be something new, so I'm working on a new, um, we're working on a whole studio area so that we actually will have a designated studio spot and that will, let me come behind you here, and we'll also have a staging wall so that we can take pretty pictures. And now I'm just drawing this. I'm actually gonna do two coats of the brown, give it a nice solid coat of brown. And that was important in this finish because when I distress, I'm gonna dry brush over the top of this. And when I do that, I'm gonna be distressing back to the brown quite a bit. And actually even possibly as far down as the wood underneath in some spots. But I need this brown to be a nice, deep, rich brown so that it has a little bit more of a feel of wood even though this doesn't ever look anything like wood when it's done. But this is a great technique, especially like this piece has a lot of scratches on the top and some, some dig marks on the top. And when we do this technique, it comes out feeling super rustic and everybody really enjoys the flaws rather than them being flaws, they're more character. You like character? I do. Reminds me of a Sarah Grove song I love that says, less like, um, less like scars, more like character. That's the line. Does anybody else listen to Sarah Groves? I just love her music. I was introduced to her at a concert that Sue was actually going to be taking Paige to. Because Paige loved, what was the group? Oh. Was it, was it Creed? No, yeah, it was Creed. Was it Creed? It was Creed. Um, Paige loved the group. Sue bought her tickets to go take her to the Creed concert. And Sue got really sick. Really sick. That was That week. I think she was sick for like three or four days. Food poisoning or something. Um, and she couldn't go. And so I said I would take Paige to the concert. Um, even though I am not a concert goer. Um, and I like Creed okay, but it wouldn't be my choice. I was bummed because I was really looking yeah, forward Yeah, Sue was really it. looking forward to it. Um, you know, I, I went because I, my daughter was looking forward to it, right? But Sarah Groves opened for them, and I instantly fell in love with her music. Um, her, it's just... Her voice is so beautiful. Like listening to her gives me goosebumps, literally gives me goosebumps. And um, I don't, I don't even remember anything else about the concert other than Paige having fun and me listening to Sarah Groves. Hi April, thanks for watching. Is that green on you? Yes. Is it a pretty green on I mean, you? It's probably green. And. Uh, Anyway, I went out, you know, where they sell all the concert t-shirts and whatever, and I never buy the t-shirts there because, and they never fit me well. Why? I always buy t-shirts. I never buy t-shirts because they never fit me well, and I'm never comfortable. Being a bigger girl, 
I don't find that any of that stuff fits nicely or is comfortable to wear, but I did buy like three or four of her CDs. I bought every CD she had, literally. I loved her voice that much. Um, first time I heard her, I bought every CD she had and then came home and I think I ordered, I think I got two or three there and then came home and ordered. She had like two, one or two more that I didn't have. And um, she really struck you. She really struck me. I mean, her voice is just unbelievable to me. And her, her lyrics really resonate with me. Um, she is a Christian singer and I don't normally listen to Christian music, but um, I don't know, they were just very, it was just beautiful music, I think. So, anyway. Wonderful lyricist, too. She's just, she's good. She's, she's good just at what she really does. beautiful. I mean, it just is moving, um, where, like, I don't know, some people feel that way, like, in an opera or whatever, like, to me, listening to her music, especially, like, if I've had a bad week, um, I love to listen to her music in my car and just sing, you know, as loud as you can kind of thing. Um, I do that with some other singers too, but like, I don't know. It's just, I've been, I've had some rough times and her music just always has made me feel better. So since, since I've had it, so I'm just a big fan, super fan. Ashley Cohn has a question. Okay, what's the question? Ashley Cohen wants to know if we ever had the opportunity to check on a five-foot desk. Um, I haven't yet. I've only been at the store for about 30 or 40 minutes. So, and actually, I will probably have to check. I might have one in the back, but I probably will have to check the warehouse for that. And I'm not at the warehouse. So, that will probably be something I won't get the answer for until tomorrow, probably. It's raining. Huh? It's raining. It's raining down there. It's funny, it's not raining up here. It's raining in the valley down here. It's raining in the valley. Sue's a valley girl. Good. Um, Sue's a valley girl. Look at all for sure. She really is, she's from California. What kind of music do you like? Who's an artist that just like stirs your soul? Oh, there's so many of them. I like music. I like concerts. I don't understand. Yeah, anything. Sue's a concert fanatic. I love music. I just like I want to listen to the music, how it's produced, and I I tend to find that that's not how it sounds in concert. Oh, that's true. So, I love music. Music is such, such a mood changer, you know? Like, you can really change how you feel. What are the products we're using again today? So today we are using Bungalow 47, um, Flower Frog on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Flower Frog is beautiful. Um, it's just a really pretty green. Sort of a, sort of a sagey green. Maybe not quite as brown as a sagey green, but sort of a family. And I am using, what am I using? It's one on the bottom. Uh, it's a good question. It's whatever, but uh, it's a bungalow, right? It is bungalow. It is wood beam. Which is good because I want it to look like wood, basically. Um, and then I'm going to dry brush on top. So this is just basically our base coats that we're working on right now. Sue's will get Probably not while we're live today, but it will get sanded with the orbital sander and then it will get distressed. Oh, I guess that's the sanding part. And then it will get um, dark waxed. That's the process for the part that she's doing. But right now she just needs to put two base coats on of the flower frog. And mine is really where the technique is gonna be today. Yep, I'm just here for for fun and entertainment. Since we don't always have a lot of commentary from you, she needs to help me keep this thing going. Because <laughs> y'all don't want to listen to me just ramble for an hour. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Listen to me sing. 
Yeah, let's do that. Everybody will tune out. <laughs> You know, I could put on some Sarah Grubbs, but then we get in trouble with YouTube. I'm sure Sarah would give you quick uh, written permission. A quick written permission? Like right now, I could just give her a call and say, hey, I'm one of your biggest her, fans. I can, can I send please? her a message on Facebook. Okay. She's very responsive on Facebook. Huh? She's very responsive on Facebook. Is she? Yes. I don't think I realized that. Um, so I know there's some big movies coming out this weekend. Is anybody going movies? to the movies? Is anybody going to the movies? Everybody's going to go just to get the heck out of the house. I saw that one of my daughter's friends posted last weekend, Labor Day weekend, that she was at a drive-in. Yeah, they've been setting up drive-ins all over the place. And I thought, that's brilliant. They should totally come back. When we lived in Hawaii... Um, one of our favorite things to do was we were military living in Hawaii, you know, we didn't have very much money, but one of our favorite things to do was there was a drive-in that always had a double feature on Friday nights. And so John and I would go and bring the kids, obviously. We had a minivan. We'd take the seat out of the back of the minivan and kind of sit it, like back the minivan up and put that out like a couch. And then the kids could lay blankets and whatever and fall asleep in there. And John and I would take turns as to who, which, like, we would agree before before we got there, who was going to get to watch which movie and which movie the one the other one was going to watch the kids at. You know, because when there's <laughs> questions and stuff, so so that one of us got to enjoy a whole movie. Um, you know, we each got to enjoy one whole movie, and the other one got interrupted a thousand times. Got to go to the bathroom. Exactly. You have a question? Yeah. The cloches from the olive candle holder thing? Yes. If they were for sale and for fun? If they were for sale, they would be $24.95. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, we can sell them. I think I can get more. So now I've got this mostly it's still you can kind of see it's still a little bit damp you can tell by the variation in the color um, what I'm really looking for is it to not lift when I add the next coat so even though I can see that this isn't a hundred percent dry um, I'm good to move on at this point so for this next technique I am or this next part of the technique I need a, a chip brush um, a good thick paper towel. So I actually have a couple here. Um, we've got these. I think these are the bounty, or they're they're like a little separated, perforated ones. or whatever, yeah. where you can make them your own size, pick a size or whatever. And so I have three here, um, and I'm gonna actually basically layer it so it's nine deep. So it's three folded wide and then three folded in. Okay. I need it nice and thick, okay? And then um, we actually did the other one with Dixie Bell, or with um, Bongo's Lamp Black, but one of the girls downstairs is painting a display piece with the Lamp Black, so I have the Caviar, which is Dixie Bell's. It's basically the same color, so I'm just gonna use that. It's not me. It, again, it won't be noticeable. Um, one, they're not gonna sit right up close to each other. They're gonna be several feet away from each other, and two, Lamp black and caviar are, they're both really nice, good dark blacks, so it'll be fine. So we have a question. Okay. Question is in regards to classes. Okay. When are we gonna have classes again? Um, Teresa is gone the rest of this week. She'll be back on Monday, and we already have two or three different classes that we're gonna schedule, so when she comes back on Monday, we will begin scheduling. And if somebody wanted to set up a private class? If somebody wanted to set up a private class, just message us on Facebook and um, we will work with you. Usually what happens is if you have at least, um, I think it's at least six people, then it might be it might be seven, I can't remember. But I think it's if you have at least six people, then we give you a discount on the classes um, for each person. So, and if you're doing a private class, you there 
we do not have social distancing requirements because it's private and um, you can bring food, drink, and alcohol. Woo -woo! So you can have a true party. We just can't provide the alcohol for you. Um, okay, so a chip brush is important. You notice I'm not using my Klingons. Um, you have to have something that is super rough. Um, the rougher, the better. If you have, I mean, I hate these chip brushes because you can see I'm flinging, I'm flinging hairs everywhere. So I'm just gonna do this a bit and knock some of these easy loose hairs out. Um, if you have an old brush that is uh, in really bad shape, like all the bristles are like bleh, like that, that's perfect for a dry brush. But you really need a brush that is basically flat. Okay, so like a French tip would not be ideal. Basically flat and it needs to have splayed or rough bristles, like not dense fibers. And I really hate chip brushes because they do fling these everywhere, but I'll show you the trick once we get going on how to get those out when you paint them in. Because inevitably, if you're using a chip brush, you will, you 100% will paint bristles in. So we're gonna dip this so that there's almost no paint on the tip, very lightly. And then with as little paint as I have on there, I'm actually gonna dab most of that paint off. See how much paint I actually took off of that? And this is why you kinda need an absorbent, nice stack of paper towels, because this is gonna get real messy by the time we're done. Um, and so what I'll do too is I'll refold this, possibly for other colors. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have nice fluid strokes, um, trying to keep this basically straight up and down and um, we're gonna make it somewhat heavy, but I don't want solid. I just want like streaks. So um, what I'm looking for is to create nice straight streaks across the top. And this is not, this is not a fast process. I will say this, this can be time consuming, but it's, it really pays off in the end. So if you find that you haven't taken enough paint off and you make a big glob, what we do then is we dry brush over that with the base coat. So in this case, that would be the wood beam, the brown wood beam. And I have a vid another video that I'll be releasing this week. I just have to do the voiceover for it. I shot it while I was not able to talk, so I don't have any, um, <laughs> you couldn't really say much. I couldn't day. really say much. So <laughs> I shot it while I couldn't talk. So I'm going to do a voiceover now that I can, but it's actually, it's another table that we did the same technique on and different colors with the same technique. And again, that table sold the first day on the floor as well. So particularly if you paint furniture, for a living, if you resell and or and you're new to it, if you've been doing it for a while, you probably have your own techniques. But if you if you're fairly new to reselling furniture, this is great for like those big dining room tables that have a lot of a lot of surface damage, but not structural damage. So where they've got like lots of digs in the top, like or this get is. Those, like, Burn marks from hot food being placed on them. Yeah, burn marks, cigarette burns, things like that. Um, this is this is a great technique to do over those. Even um, some of the like water rings, things like that, they'll show. But again, it it becomes more character than than damage. Like I like to say that furniture has a story, and we should show off its story. Like, I'm a big fan of that concept. So you can already see my paper towel is getting pretty full of paint. And I try to watch how full it gets because rather than dipping in sometimes, you'll see me actually come like right now and I, you know, I wet a lot of the paint off of my, unloaded a lot of the paint off of my brush onto the paper towel. So sometimes rather than dunking it back in the paint, I can actually just pick it up from the paper towel. 
you're not wasting as much paint. As yeah, I'm trying not to waste hardly any paint. And this technique uses so little, so little paint. Oh, I think I didn't. Didn't dab enough. I didn't dab enough on that one. Ooh, we get to learn how you cover it up. So it's still got a streak, but it's not, it's a little darker than I thought. And I'll basically do the same thing across the front. Um, I'll show you how as I go around, how I do the edge on that. We'll layer it out the same way. Okay, so for this band, what I do is basically, instead of going this way, I go this way. So I'm using the small side of my brush. So asking about painting classes, would, is this a technique you'd like to learn in a painting class? I could teach it on a bench or something like that. This could, could be a fun painting class, because this is a good technique. I could have some uh, benches made up, have our, our maker make up some benches for us. We're also gonna be moving our painting studio to the back room instead of the floor, and we're gonna expand our floor space a little. Customers are enjoying our fashion area. And so we kind of took some of that space away from, you know, the furniture area. So we're not getting rid of the classes. So when you see all the tables gone from here, don't think that we don't offer classes anymore. We've just moved them to behind the door that's usually closed back to our offices. But we don't usually have classes when we have um, our regular work day going on. Sometimes okay. are Saturday afternoons, but yeah, but nobody's usually working in the offices then. Yeah. So I'm just gonna dry this, especially this area, because it went on a little heavy. And because I still have more layers to do, I'm not gonna worry about it covering it just yet, because I think I'll have plenty of time to cover it with what's coming up. So right now, it just kind of looks messy. It doesn't look like anything interesting. Now I have a couple pieces of, of the bristles that have dried in here. And basically once the paint is completely dry so that I can't smudge it, um, once it's completely dry, you literally can just knock them right off. So if you, if you try to brush them off while the paint is wet, you're gonna smear it. But just let them dry right in the finish and then you can knock them right off with your hand. So that's tip number one. Okay. So then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna next. I'm gonna apply some some metal roof. Roof. Rusty. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my napkin and paper towels. So I've got it folded in thirds. And I'm going to fold it in thirds again, just so I've got the right surface. I've got my metal roof. We can mix up. Yeah, we're getting mixed up. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to um, lightly dab in here. Um, I definitely have too much on that, so I'm just going to brush it off. Okay. And I'm going to do. I'm going to basically repeat the same thing not worrying about going right over the black. Now I'm gonna say that if I do it too heavy with this, it's for sure gonna show. So I do wanna be more cautious because it's light color against the dark. And sometimes I do move my brush like this to this if I'm trying to fill in an area that I feel like I didn't get well enough. And I wanna be sure that I do have some streaks and that I'm not just filling like a like a, a thin coat on. I want to make sure that there's actual streaks here. And I didn't take my time to unfluff this brush, so I'm leaving hair everywhere. Everywhere. Deep 
fluff, lady, deep fluff. I know. Oh my gosh, I see all. Look at my napkin. <laughs> Can you see how much fluff is on my napkin right now? It's crazy. But I'm not going to worry about them. When it dries, I'll be able to knock them right off, just like I said. So, but notice how fast this goes, really. Okay, I have left a couple in my pink pan now. I tend to have a, a heavy hand with dry brushing because, well, I haven't really learned the technique and I attempted to do it on my own one day and, well, I really got to listen to you. Um, yeah, Sue puts pressure down on the brush and the important thing about this is not to add pressure. It's literally, you're just sort of wiping it over um, hold it up and sometimes it's easier for people who had too much pressure on the brush to hold it up high um, I hold it sort of at the curve where um, where you're really supposed to but the whole thing is it should be able to pendulum sling basically um, I'm just rubbing it across I'm not you know I'm trying not to put a lot of pressure on the bristles Yeah, this color green is really pretty. I really like Bungalow's choices of colors, I have to say. I feel like I've had, been able to paint a lot this week, and it's really nice. Um, You've been a busy little bee this week, creating, creating, creating. Did you guys see my jewelry boxes that I did? I'm really in love gorgeous. with that. I'm really in love with that mermaid that I did with the JRB stencil. That came out so neat. I had a bunch of people asking on how I did that. So I'm probably going to have to do something else with a very similar technique, showing how to do the shading and the highlights and all that with the JRB stencils. Yeah, I keep telling her she needs to just do a, a versus video on uh, dabbing or sponging or brushing and swirling and I haven't been keeping telling me. You told me like yesterday. And, and that was a no. And I haven't done it yet since yesterday. And it should have been done by now. Just saying. I have like six videos I have to edit right now. It's a busy little bee. And I thought about filming that when I was doing it, but I didn't because honestly, I wasn't 100% sure how it was gonna turn out, you know? And then your phone was dead. Huh? And then your phone. And then my phone was dead. No. My phone does go through a lot. That is for sure. Get that little sucker busy. Hi. Hi. So again, when I'm doing the side, I'm just using sort of the flat end of the brush this way instead of this way. And that gives me a little bit more control. Okay, so now I'm gonna just give this a little heat gun, make sure that it's completely dry before I move on. I get rid of any bristles, which are many, <laughs> that have stuck. When I thought about it, I would have cleaned out the bristles before I put the brushes out. I think it's really important when you do this technique that you do at least two to three colors total. Um, I think less than three colors, it's just not enough. And I probably wouldn't do more than four. You definitely want that depth of the different colors. What? You want that depth of the different colors. Yeah, you really do want the depth and the different colors. So one base coat and at least two highlight colors and they should have some distance between them. So like in this case, it's sort of like a, a cement color and a black. When I did the other table, the one I still have to do the voiceover for, I added a teal because the table had um, teal bases and two of the end chairs had teal on them. So that had a third color. And I think it might've even had a fourth because I think I actually ended up adding kind of a brighter white at the end um, to the top. Okay, so now we have our 
wood beam, which is like a chocolate brown underneath. We have the caviar, which is our black. And then we have our metal roof, which is sort of our, our taupey gray cementy color. And now I'm gonna go back with the black and I'm gonna dry brush again over this. And the reason we do it this way, instead of adding a heavier layer of black and a heavier layer of the, the metal roof is because we really want the depth. We are not, unless I do something really heavy, we aren't gonna add any more chocolate. Um, we are gonna do one more coat of black and then one more coat of the metal roof. If I really wanted depth in here, like I said, I could add a third color and then we'd have a total of six layers that above is. the base. As this way, we're gonna have four. Um, but that's a good way also. And I'll say the more depth I want, the more color I'll probably add. But I'm matching this to that other table and that was for, it was the base, black, metal roof, uh, black metal roof again. So same thing. And I'm just going to go back to the same dry brushes that I had, the same napkin that I had. And again, this is why I say you need, you need a good thick napkin because you don't want, you know, you don't, you don't want to end up with getting, getting that all over. And part of this is you're like, well, why do I need all those layers when you know, you're basically doing a heavy brush over, like I'm, now I'm gonna do a heavier brush over this light brush. And the reason is because when I sand this back with the orbital sander, you're actually gonna see all of those layers. You'll see all of those layers come through with the orbital. What is it they say? It gets ugly before it gets pretty. Yeah, it gets ugly before it gets pretty. And we'll end up sanding it so you'll even see the primer underneath. Hi. Hi. You can come right, yeah, either that way or that way, either way. We have some customers in the store and we're kind of blocking an aisle away a little bit because yeah, of where we are. Yeah, we're in an unusual spot today. Yeah. Ugh. Well, you know, nice yeah. All right, am I dry on that side? I don't know, but there's a heat gun over here. So you can already see, like I'm covering up a lot of that lightness again. And my napkin is getting really saturated at this point. So I'm trying to be fairly consistent. It's okay if you have a little bit of inconsistency, but if you do try to, like if I go really dark here, I could come over here and try to add some more darkness and balance that out. And as I said, at the end, we're really gonna balance all of it out with the orbital sander. That's the fun part. That's when this piece really comes to life. And who doesn't love playing with power tools? Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Over the years, I've amassed quite the collection of power tools. I have a new one to learn because John got a lathe, I don't know, what, about six months ago? It was definitely uh, pre-pandemic. Yeah, pre-pandemic, got a lathe. Um, so maybe even longer than that. And how many times do you think he's used it? Four times? Yep, that. So I'm thinking that could be my next tool that I play with. I may have to learn the lathe. I have a CNC too that I need to figure out how to use because he bought that like two years ago and has used it maybe four times. That seems to be like his number. That's his number. Four times and he's done. Four times and he's done. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? So you can see we're moving right along in here. Again, it goes pretty fast. And I'm actually doing it slower than I would normally because I've been talking to it. And I want you to see the technique. I can I can typically whip this. It definitely takes longer to do the base coat on the bottom. 
than it does to do the dry brushing on the top. Do we need to dip nice and close up on it or are we good? Are we good? We can all see. I, think I can see it. Get closer to them. And Sue's usually monitoring all the conversation. Oh, well, I don't think there's much conversation happening. But how are you? We're all watching. Hopefully you guys are doing something fun if you're not home watching us. I mean, geez. And we are almost to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And I think when we hit a thousand is when we're actually able to do live on YouTube. Straight up on YouTube. We need to get there. And my low battery signal coming, so I'm just gonna hit the low power mode. I need to plug you in. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna borrow that. So I'm gonna, again, make sure my top is dry. Oh yeah, okay, we're good. Ooh, this is in my paint, man. I'm gonna unplug the sander, you know? Gonna find a way to plug you in. Okay, what are these doors for? Not gonna be easy. Right? Plugging you in with the power is not gonna be easy. I've got the power. It's gonna get a little jostly for a second because Sue is gonna plug my phone in because I have a low battery. She always has a low battery. It might be time for me to get a new phone. I did work the heck out of my phone. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Okay, so now I've got that done. And again, I'm just gonna use my hand to brush off any of those loose bristles. They roll right off when they're dry. Can anybody guess what the next step is? Who knows, who knows, who knows? Uh, the next step is, it's perfect, walk away. No. No? Oh. So our next step is to go back to our lighter color that we dry brushed and do it again on the top. One more time. One more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry brush again. Same basic thing and here again with my brush. This I didn't clean up this brush. I'm gonna run into the same issues with this layer because I still have all kinds of strings in here. All crazy strands. We've gotten some great new products and I'm so excited to play with. Which one? Mostly I'm excited to play with the JRV stencils because... Well, you've been having fun with those already. I have been having fun, but I ordered like 60 stencils and I've tried like three, maybe four. And some of those, like the mermaid one, that has like six or seven different things on it. And I only did like three of those, four of those. So I have so much fun to be had here. So is that your goal to try and get every stencil? Yes, and she just came out with seasonal ones, especially a black cat one. So I, oh, I saw that for one. sure have to order that. And my new stencil brushes should be here any day. I saw that they shipped. Those are from Prima. They're the same ones I use. Um, so they should be here. They're kind of smaller, which I like. I've had a lot of people asking about um, stenciling on fabric. And so I want to give, I want to do a video on that showing um, some tips on stenciling on fabric because I do think that stenciling on fabric is very different than, than stenciling on wood or metal. I think how, I think that your paint choices should be different personally, unless you're super skilled. Apparently I'm in the flick zone. Sue's in the flick zone. It's like the splash zone of SeaWorld. 
conflict zone it's of the pain. It's the splash zone of Melissa. Not that I'm implying I'm a whale. And, and I'm just going to say thanks, Teresa. It's her fault that I'm in the, in the flick zone. She's probably at home laughing. Ha ha, it's not me. So now I'm pretty much at the basic end here, but what I want to do is I want to compare my top to this one. And one thing I notice right off is that while they're very similar, I actually have a lot heavier dry brush on this one. So I'm gonna add some more heavy dry brushing on the top of this. And heavy dry brushing basically means that you have more paint on your brush. So I went, I, I sort of remember going across the whole table sort of very thick with a dry brush, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. And I have a little bit more start end. So can you see how I'm kind of adding like another layer of it just to make it good and thick? Yvette's watching. Hi, Yvette. Yvette says, working with new products and new techniques. Woohoo! Uh, bought my clean on brush from your store. I love it. Also bought fusion paint and oh my god, it goes on so smooth. Fusion is Ladies great. watching, you need to get a clean on brush. They are awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. They thank are you. pretty fun, aren't they? Um, Easy to clean, right? Yeah, and fusion has such a durable finish. Uh, I really like dry brushing with fusion, actually. It's great and it's nice and thin, so it makes it easier to dry brush. And it's my preferred paint for stenciling on fabric. We were just talking about that. Um, because it has a built-in top coat, when you stencil on fabric, you don't have to worry about a sizing medium or a fabric medium, and you can wash it. So if you're doing like kids' shirts or pillows that, like I don't know at your house, but in my house, we live on our furniture. I mean, we live on our furniture. So we have pets and animals and children and more animals. I know I've mentioned them a few times, but that's because we've got a lot of them. <laughs> um, and like, my kids don't live at home anymore, so we hardly ever eat at the dining room table. We're like animals ourselves. We eat on the sofa. And you know, right now I will say we're one of those people that puts sheets on their sofas because I just got a really nice sofa from here. Um, and I don't want it ruined yet. I mean, I don't want it ruined it's, ever. It's velvety but... and I don't want the, the cat furs in there. You know how that is. Cat fur and velvet, they just stick together like, like a glue. Okay. So this is a nice, much heavier coat. I uh, hope you can see the difference. And the heavier coat leaves that streakiness that you see in this image. See it? Okay. So now you might feel like you just did all this work and you covered it all up. Uh, you covered up the black and you covered up the brown and you just had this streaky. Don't worry, we're gonna get it there. So I'm gonna take that heat brush again, or the heat dryer, and make sure it's dry. And you said you unplugged the sander? You did. So again, I'm looking for all these little hairs that basically got stuck They're everywhere. They do have some kind of neat lines though, I will say. In this texture, they work. And so this is super coarse right now. It's very rough. Very, very rough. It does not feel nice and smooth. I 
that baby butt smooth we like so well. It is not the baby butt smooth that we like so well. Okay, I feel like it's nice and dry now. We're going to swap out. I'm going to unplug the heat dog. Should I not paint my second coat until you're done? You'll be fine. We gotta sand all that up anyway, so if it gets some dust in it, it'll be fine. What about me? You <laughs> might be dusty. What about me and my dust collection? So I'm actually gonna put a new sandpaper on here. Um, this was 220, I think, but we need something a little rougher. Well, that was the 120, yeah. So I'm gonna use 120 grit um, paper. So the higher the number, the, the, the smoother it is, the softer it is. And I want this, and it, it will do a fine sanding job. In this case, I want it to do kind of a coarse sanding job. So now that I've got fresh 120 grit on here, I'm gonna go over this, and I'm actually gonna apply pressure on my orbital so that it kind of digs in in places. Oh my. and you can suddenly see all the layers that we applied. And you see how you can now see even down to the original wood. Okay, so this, the, the original color wood is not the same on the other piece. Um, it has... The original piece, I'm holding the tripod, so I'm trying not to. So the original piece actually has sort of a darker brown under there. So I could go in and try to add some dark brown stain in there if I wanted to. In this case, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, I think it'll be fine. Again, they'll be across the room from each other. What's really important is that they, they have the same basic look about them. I'll catch this bottom ridge here when we go to do all the sanding at the bottom, I'll catch this ridge. But what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and it looks, it really looks very consistent to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare to do the top coat because that's what's gonna keep it um, from wearing. We're actually gonna do, not live today, we're actually gonna do about five thin top coats on this to make sure this is gonna be a serving buffet which means food and water are likely to go on it. And so I wanna make sure that it wears really well for these clients. What do you think about the top so far? 
Are you, like it. Are you surprised that the layers come out the way they do after all of that? Layer, 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 layer. Can you see all five layers in it? I'm just trying to make sure I've got all the dust off of it. You could use a vacuum or a um, cheesecloth. That's just a nice damp cloth for me. So entertain them for a moment. I gotta get right. So entertain. Da 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 da. You like that frog? Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my ragtime gal. That one? Yep, that one. See? I know my cartoon. Oh, look, I got people liking it. Thank you, everybody. Oh. Probably not for my singing, no, huh? That was probably more for the top than my singing. It's okay, I get it. I was not born to be a singer. Doesn't mean I don't like singing, because, you know, who doesn't like singing? Okay, so I'm back. So I just have one of these little rag, uh, little sponges. I only sell the blue ones, which are the Dixie Belle ones, but I still have some of the older yellow ones that we had before we became Dixie Belle retailers. And the Dixie Bells are actually better, but since I still have these, I use them. Um, I'm just gonna pour, this is the Wise Owl Satin Varnish. This is what I did the other table in. It's probably my favorite satin varnish, which is why I use it. We all know I love general finishes flat out flat. If I'm doing flat, but this, the table that matches this was in satin. And so to get a nice consistent, I just pour it either right on the piece or right in the sponge. And I'm just going to rub it across. And you can see how it really brings to life all those colors. You bet so, she loves your layers. Thank you. I love your layers too. Like an onion. <laughs> like an onion. Shrek. Okay. So you can see how it really brings to life this piece and it really starts to show up all of those layers. And again, if you were to really come and look at this closely, you would see the white under the black and, and all of that. So you really wanna have multi dimensions. You wanna do thin layer by thin layer and then you can do like I did a, a, a thicker top layer at the top of it, but you wanna go um, do it layer by layer, not just one thick layer of this or one thick layer of that. The more you do that, the more dimension you'll have. I, I don't, I mean, I don't really know that there's a point in doing too much more than two coats of each. If I wanted more dimension, I would probably just use more colors because then you'll get, you know, you could use uh, an ash gray instead of another layer of charcoal or something. How the heck did I get a cat hair in here? Um, we're bringing cat hairs in? Apparently we bring our cats with us to work. If not in person, then in our clothing. Okay, so I've got one good layer and I'm looking for the wetness and I'm looking for the sheen. And this is not gonna be full coverage, you know, in one swipe. Like I said, this is gonna be, we're probably gonna do um, any four or five thin layers of this. And so I'll let this dry for a few hours and then I'll come back. I could force it dry and just do layer after layer, but to be honest on the top coat, I prefer that it have a chance to rest and actually fully dry naturally before I move on. So this is effectively what the final product is gonna look like. It's just gonna have more protection than this. And I think that you can see that it really does look like the table. I'm gonna move the camera so we can we can say our goodbyes. That's no, time, it's that time to say goodbye. All right, I'm just gonna leave that here. I'll move back a little so Sue. Can you see Sue? Hello. Hello, you can't really see Sue. Okay guys, so thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial on how to do a dry brush distressed finish on a tabletop. This really is fabulous for doing those larger surfaces because um, you don't have to worry about having a super smooth 
um, line that goes straight all the way from one end to the next. The And you don't have to worry about having a pristine piece to begin with. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them here on the comments. And if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to uh, smash that like button, as they say, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks.